Fight fans, our next fight tonight scheduled three three-minute rounds in our unified amateur middleweight division. Introducing first man fighting out of the blue corner. Standing six foot one inch tall, his official weight 183 pounds. His record, one win, no losses. Fighting out of Kingdom MMA here in Edmonton, Alberta. Please welcome Evan Sagan. His opponent, this man, fighting out of the red corner. Standing five foot 11 inches tall, his official weight, 182.6 pounds. Fighting out of Shade Bears MMA here in Edmonton, Alberta. And tonight, making his amateur MMA debut, please welcome Parker Vandeville. When the cage door closes, your referee in charge is Luke Boutin. Sagan in the black shorts. Benveld in the brownish. Maroon. Maroon. <laughs> and already the shot attempt there from Parker. Sorry, Vanderbilt. And taking the back here. Makes an easy lift, but Sagan doing wow. a good job of staying heavy until he gets lifted. And that's that's the that's the difference of years and years of manhandling somebody. Yeah, you like you gotta lift a weight that is going out of its way to not be lifted. So it's a different type of strength. And, and Parker doing a good job just staying in the guard, um, staying square with his opponent. And, and that's the thing too is these amateur rules with no ground and pound, a lot of the time they they do, it, it's advantageous for the grappler. If you can get a takedown, it can sometimes change the whole fight. Oh, the right hand there from Parker. Sagan back up to his feet quickly. Parker looking for the takedown again. Getting chest to chest. Very comfortable in this position, looking for the big right big hand. Big right hand, straight shots there from Parker. And those double underhooks. The other thing is, is all his training partners that, he work, that Parker works with, they're all used to five minute rounds. So he's training with, you know, 205 champ Parker, I mean, Graham, Graham Park, beautiful right hand. Um, you know, so he hopefully he has the, the conditioning, but there's also the first time you're fighting, so it, there's a lot that goes into this. Yeah, those overhand rights are finding a home. Feeling out process here in round one. A little mouse on the second. The right big hand. right hand by Parker doubles it up. Parker doing a good job. You know, he needs to get his hands up a little bit, though. But and that is, like, they're, <laughs> once again, a, a battle of two guys with one fight between them, and officially, and showing a lot more skill than it is available. Nice little shot there from Sagan. Pretty incredible this is the same weight class as the one we just watched <laughs> in the last fight. Yeah. Right hand. Lots of body types in that. Sagan going for the takedown. Parker shrugging it off. Vanderveld with the body language a little tiring. Yeah. Well, he's been, oh. But look at, does it matter? That right hand scored. Luke Boutin coming in. Because of the amateur ranks. Referee talking to Sagan. Fans don't seem to be happy with this decision. I think the exact quote was, hey ref, you suck. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it's tough because especially it's MMA, you train for that and, you know, um, obviously tempers are not, like, you just, you want to go after your opponent, you landed this big shot, you dropped your opponent, you know, um, and he was kind of like, looks like he was starting to get up, so it makes it tough, but, you know, it's, it's intention, you know, that's all based on uh, what Mustache Mountain here, uh, what, what his... And it's a live fight. It's a live fight. It's a live fight. That's, that's what we have to... Oh, one getting point. a point. Take care. point. Wow, that's huge. Well, and especially in these fights, you know, that basically that, that, in my opinion, that turns that round into a draw. Unless Sagan does something yes. substantial here. Substantial in the next couple seconds right there. One, two combination scores by Sagan at the end. Yeah. So, you know. In a very kind of bizarre round. Yes, the wrestler landing the big strike. You know, and unfortunately with that, that point deduction, it changes the scope of the fight, you know. Uh, inversely, it gave time for Vanderbilt to, to recover, so to speak. You know, um, 
it's, it's interesting to see how it'll be scored. In my opinion, it'd be a 9-9 round, but who knows? And, and let's see how both fighters come out in the second round. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, we had some really big throws from Van Belt, and then, of course, there's this knockdown. Yeah. yeah. Big right hand there, and then a nice little follow-up shot, unfortunately. Not legal at this point. Right away, you can tell he's like, dang, I was not supposed to do that. But it's, it's just his instinct. Uh, you know, so I'm interested to see how both fighters come out. And I think that's valuable learning, right? Yeah. Because you have to be present in the moment. Moment. You have to know, even in this, this very stressful situation, you still have to be conscious of the things that you can't do because a point will be taken. Yeah. And then you're, again, if we're looking at the professional ranks, half your money could be taken. Yep. Yeah, you know, like, beautiful return to Matt, though, in that round. You know, when he was working his wrestling, it was he was working well, but then he found a home for that right hand, and it's really easy to, you know, to fall in love with that moment when you're, you're touching your opponent with those gloves. Round two about to get underway here at Unified MMA 50. Oh, the combination there from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt getting in tight, looking for that body lock. Double unders there from Vanderbilt. Nice little dirty box in there, a la Randy Couture. Yeah. And on that breakaway, that's the difference. Push kick there from Sagan. Sagan using nice straight punches. Is that his key to victory? I think so. I think the movement is the key to break that space and potentially in these clinches chipping up his opponent with... Uh, he does not want to be anywhere close to that cage. No, especially with the style of, of Vanderbilt. You know, right here, they're they're exchanging those knees, and it's just like, he needs to acquire those, those points, so to speak, in this position, because the moment where he's not treating it with respect is where Vanderbilt could get the takedown. And this is Sagan's best opportunity, the open right playing field. Vanderbilt now moving forward, landing on the cranium of Sagan. Just throws a lot of commitment. You can tell that he's a really phenomenal athlete. Yes, uh, very much so. Very strong and in those positions. And, you know, wrestling, oh, beautiful right hand. And the, the toughness that wrestling builds. But it doesn't, it does look like Vanderbilt's muscles are a little, a little tighter. Yeah, well, yeah, totally, totally. But, you know, for right now, he's, he's getting those points, so to speak. But, you know, this, this is, there's another, like, half the fight has gone by already. So, yeah. like, you got to be able to do this for another five and yeah. a half minutes, right? So it makes it tough. I think, that, great. I think that I love about the way Vanderbilt throws is oftentimes he's fainting the takedown and using that to wind up the punch. I think that's a beautiful takedown. Yeah. And that, that's what Sagan's afraid of. Yes. You know, you get your hips back, your hands come down slightly, and now you're worried about the takedown, switch from a strong wrestler right here. He's doing a good job of keeping the pressure on his opponent. And then, you know, your hands are down, boom, big right hand. My hands come up. Now I'm open for the takedown, which is exactly what happened right there. And Sagan looking to stand up there. And uh, Vanderbilt doing a good job of keeping the pressure with his head position. If you see right there, it's right underneath the, his head. Fortunately, Sagan, actually, Sagan's doing a good job of, yeah. of creating that space and not allowing that that that, prep, that head pressure to make him stand tall. And you have to applaud Sagan for managing to get back to the upright position where he feels that this is his path to victory. Technically, yes, you know, he's the more refined striker in my opinion, but, you know, Vanderbilt's doing a good job of landing these big shots and, and making his opponent react to him. And a big, deep breath. A nice kick to the midsection by Sagan. And this is where Sagan needs a beautiful right hand, is the jab. He needs to establish his jab. Because once he's in here, and especially with the rule set, it allows uh, Vanderbilt to really walk him towards the cage where he's going to be the most effective. Two rounds down. Two athletes visibly tired as they go back to their respective corners. This is a great test for both of these guys. You know, Vanderbilt is very first amateur fight, and Sagan facing a really, really tough opponent in his second. And I think it's very clear that Vanderbilt has won these first two rounds with the power and the wrestling that he has. Totally, like this double leg that that, that happened in, in the match, he just powered his opponent to, to the ground. So I, I, it's fair to say that if you're the Shade Bears guys, you're telling your athlete to do exactly what you did in those first two rounds. Yeah, you have to say, hey, that first round, in my opinion, is a 9-9, and then you're like, the second round, you came ahead. Let's not make any dumb mistakes. 
you know, let's not get, let's not start reaching for our takedowns. If you're tired, take your time, but still keep doing what you're doing. So again, has to do the opposite. He has to start getting and establishing that jab and that distance with the push kick and keep his opponent away. If you are the corner of Sagan, are you telling your fighter you're down two rounds, you have to do something here or you're going to lose the decision? You got to win this round if you want to draw. You got to finish your opponent if you want to win this fight. Gotcha. And, or 10 8. Yeah, 10 8 will get you there. Easier said than done again. Yeah, I don't know. Harper. Sometimes they hand them out for no reason. <laughs> easy, easy. Third and final round, about to get underway. This has been a like knockdown, drag down fight. You know, both guys are obviously going to be tired coming into this third round, but it's the experience to Gank could pay the pay dividends just because he's been, you know, he's just he's been there before. So again, looking for the takedown. Van Velt said, yeah, I don't think so. No, like that was not happening, unfortunately. You know, it's, uh, but the knees, the body are really good. And like a trip attempt there. And, and Parker, I mean, Van Der Velt getting back into throwing those shots and then looking for the takedown, keeping the pressure. You know, as we talked about earlier, the importance of damage in this round could, could mean everything, you know? So it, it's, it's interesting, Parker, uh, they both throw on push kicks. Make me wonder if Sagan's trying to make Parker wrestle to try to take his energy away and capitalize. Maybe, the maybe. maybe. I don't see a whole lot of other reasons to try to wrestle Parker. To be perfectly honest. Well, sometimes people seem to be under the pressure, like, well, I know a double leg, I can not double, like, and sure. I go, I wrestle at my school. But there's a difference when all you do is wrestle twice a day, every day. Beautiful right hand into the single leg from from Parker. And in my opinion, I would just be like, just stay here, don't do anything. But also, I'm not a fan favorite <laughs> for that reason. Um, you know, uh, Sagan doing a good job getting on his side, trying to get off the close to the cage so he can start to wall walk, create that distance and space, which he did earlier in the fight. But, you know, um, part of Vanderbilt doing a good job of just kind of like doing that body lock, shut down shop. And that's the importance. I'd like to see him square up and put his opponent's uh, neck and head against the cage because otherwise this happens. Because if your head and neck is constantly crunched in, it's not gonna allow you for to get like your hips aren't as mobile, and uh, you know it just it limits your mobility. Right here, he's creating a shelf. Unfortunately, uh, Parker is. So it's, again, is able to create some space, and this is gonna lead to him being able to stand up. Manifel just controlling these positions, and a good spot with just over a minute remaining in the contest. Looking for that single leg takedown. Will he get it? Yes, indeed he does. Single to double there, chaining those takedowns together. And that's the other, that's the part of wrestling. It's not your double leg, it's not your single, it's not your body lock. It's the scrambles, it's your entry, it's all these different things. It's the pressure that you put onto your opponent. Even though they're putting pressure on your head and you have to pretend like it's okay, it doesn't hurt real bad, but now my face and neck hurts. When you train with Parker, how, you know, how, how do, you, do you think he's going to go for a submission here, or do you think he's just going to try to control him right up the round? You know, of all the things, he's very, got a very good diaphragm choke, the, the Josh Barnett on Dean Lister, so mm. to speak. He's got, it's very good and from that Kezakatami position. Um, it's not so much that it's, he's, he's good at transitioning to position-wise. His submission, he has a couple. You know, his arm triangle is really good. The big thing is, 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 is not giving up those positions, is not doing submissions for the sake of doing submissions. It's about, if I'm doing a submission, I'm not going to give up this, this, this position and end up in a bad position because... He's winning the fight. You're, yeah. you're winning the fight, and you can you can think... Big example, Ty Flores against Grant Park. Yep. Park went to the back uh, needlessly and lost that round completely and kind of set the motion what happened the rest of the fight. Vanderbilt doing a great job of really just out-positioning his opponent and just sticking to it, staying on his opponent. In my opinion, there was no reason for him to like even even past past uh, half stars. Dominant yeah. performance. I mean, the most important thing, especially uh, amateurs, win fights. Get the experience. You've got to get as much information as possible so you can increase your fight IQ if the goal is to go to the pro ranks. Yeah, and and you know you slowly add add tools as you gain that experience, so to speak. You know, um, Vanderbilt could could use from. You know, maybe some more up and down, some feints, some sure. these other things. But, you know, he did a lot of really good things considering it's his first amateur fight. Exactly. You know, and uh, maybe keep his opponent on the ground. So we'll get a little bit of heck for that. But other uh, than that, you know, both fighters, really good fight. You know, Sagan did a good job of 
you know, trying to like make the most of a very tough position in that clinch, you know, make his opponent maybe wary of, of going for that clinch fight. Uh, but, you know, in my opinion, Vanderbilt was just too much uh, with that wrestling background. Who will emerge victorious? We'll find out the answer right now. Fight fans, we have a decision. Judge Ziad Harb, Judge Jason Tatlow, and Judge Andy Social score this fight all the same, 29-27, for your winner by unanimous decision, Parker Vandeveld. Vandeveld gets the victory here, no surprises.